for transgender women have been allowed to pray at an Indian temple at the center of a bitter road over whether women should be permitted to enter, despite a Supreme Court ruling allowing women devotees into the Saboramala Shrine in Kerala state. They have been blocked repeatedly by mobs. The transgender women, all wearing black sarees, were allowed to enter on Tuesday under police protection. The temple has historically been closed to women of menstruating age. The group of transgender women had been blocked from accessing the temple on Sunday by police, citing security concerns. Before September is Supreme Court ruling, transgender women were allowed to enter the shrine. But since the decision which sparked violent protests, some police officials had suggested that transgender women should dress as men in order to gain access. They refused and took their case to a committee set up by the Kerala High Court. The panel agreed that they could pray at the shrine. And temple officials also said they did not object to the transgender women because they do not menstruate. The earlier ban on women between the ages of 10 to 50 entering the Sabarimala Shrine was in place partly because the temple deity, Lord Biopa, was a bachelor. The shrine's management had said the court ruling ending the ban led to security concerns as women, including activists, were met with protests from members of the Hindu Nationalist Authority of United Party BJP and other allied organizations. These organizations wanted tradition to be followed. Despite the ruling of the court on 28 September, based on the fundamental rights of women, one of the transgender women, San San Kang Wai E A R Kang O L D Trapfi, told BBC Hindi on Tuesday that women like her were very much part of. Hinduism and were respected as such. I am very happy that we were able to pray to I open. We are devotees. We had followed all the rituals that a pilgrim should follow to visit the shrine. Trapsi said. She added that the other transgender women to pray at the shrine were Anamia, 26, Randramo, 30, and Vantika, 24. They were accompanied by some 20 police officers, but their presence at the temple was not met with protests or resistance. Police said a poacher has been ordered to watch the Disney film Bambi repeatedly after he was convicted of illegally killing hundreds of the Missouri hunter David Barry. Chia must view the film at least once a month during his year-long sentence. He was arrested in August, along with two family members, for killing the deer, taking their heads and leaving their bodies to rot. Prosecutors said, it is reportedly one of the biggest poaching cases in Missouri history. On top of the jail sentence, of the illegal deer hunting, Judge Robert George ordered Perry they are to view the Walt Disney movie Dambi, with the first viewing being on or before December. 23rd, 2018, and at least one such viewing each month thereafter. During his spell in prison, the 1942 cartoon about woodland creatures shows a hunter kill the mother of eponymous dear character Bambi. A month's long investigation spanning several states led to the arrest of Barry D.R., his father David Perry Sr., and his brother Kyle Perry, according to a local newspaper. The Springfield News Leader, while the total number of deer taken illegally is unknown, Lawrence County's conservation agent Tandy Bonds said it could be several hundred. Harry J.R. received a year-long sentence in Lawrence County Prison after pleading guilt to illegally taking wildlife. He has also been sentenced to a one to zero day term in Barton County Prison. Five firearms probation violation, and both he and his father had their hunting privileges revoked for life by the Missouri Conservation Commission. The US military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al Shabaab in six airstrikes in Somalia.
for airstrikes on Saturday killed 30 to militants and a further to our Sunday killed 28, it said. In a statement, these were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017 when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of airstrikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in airstrikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least far to the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The US has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the US military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, as presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since 18 special forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993. A battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. Most civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government. The United States military said, Alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al-Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia, the US Africa Command said. Al-Shabaab, which is linked to Al-Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the Hero Institute said. In a report published in November that Al-Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in airstrikes, the institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases, but attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay. Its taxes had increased markedly. The United States State Department, in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somalia as a terrorist safe haven and said Al-Shabaab remained a threat despite suffering setbacks. The group retained control over large parts of the country and the ability to carry out high-profile attacks using suicide bombers, explosive devices, mortars, and small arms. The report added, the US military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al Shabaab in six air strikes in Somalia. Four air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28, it said. In a statement, these were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of air strikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in air strikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least 40 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The US has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the US military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since 18 special forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993. A battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. Most civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, 
which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government. The United States military said, alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al-Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia. The United States Africa Command said, Al-Shabaab, which is linked to Al-Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the Hero Institute said, in a report published in November, that Al-Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in air strikes. The institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases, but attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay. It taxes had increased markedly.